Hey, it's Chronologically Gaming, the only channel that's perpetually retro because we're playing every video game in order of release. The first and probably the only time you'll see someone daring to play every single video game. Welcome to May 1982. Let's see what's brand new. We last read Electronic Games Issue 3 and uh, had some very cool articles in it. If you, if you get a chance, check out our last episode. Let's press forward and see our next game. We're next going to the Commodore VIC-20, and this is Fantasyland. Fantasyland, like Adventureland, but uh, better, maybe worse. Looks like we've got a text-only game. This one is not available to, with any box that we can find or any other artwork besides some screenshots. So let's pop in and play on our Commodore VIC-20 Fantasyland by Vince Sorensen in early May 1982. What's it going to be like? Here we go, Vince. Some commands are quit, save, help, get, go, load, drop, use. Yeah, we're familiar with our text adventure games here. We are professionals. Please hit any key to start the game. Got it. So no joystick needed. Got to use keyboard only. Where am I? Home. What's here? Keys. Rust-colored rug. Flashlight. Exits. North, south, east, west. They just get right down to it. Why have another adventure games done this? Here's where you are. Here's what's here. And here's where you can go. And we've got nothing. Okay, what should we do? Well, let's get those keys. Got to have those in the text adventure game. And get that flashlight. Okay, they didn't update what's here, though. It still says there's a flashlight here. And then get rug, maybe? What does rug mean? Oh, it doesn't understand that. What about pull? That verb isn't... Oh, it doesn't even understand rug. Okay, so I'll do look again. Rust colored rug. There's no way it's going to understand that. Get rust colored rug. Oh, I did plus instead of dash, but it's still under very strange that it doesn't understand that what the rug is. Usually it only gives you the small word that, in text adventure games. Well, maybe we don't need it. I'm sure something's hiding under the rug. Okay, let's go north. Use a verb and a noun. Man, they're yelling at us. Uh, how about go north? Instead of go... Okay, there we go. So where am I? We're now in London. What's here? The Book of Secrets, a picture of mom, a lamp, and the queen. <laughs> They're all here in London. That's that's all we got for going north. And it shows you also what we've got. So it, it is nice how they're just displaying everything. Great feature for a text adventure game. All right, so uh, get Book of Secrets, maybe? Let's see if it understands it. It's not here. What do you mean it's it's not here? Get book of secret. Wait, did I not? Usually I spell these wrong, but it looks like it's not there. What about get a uh, picture? Maybe before anything you can do before you can do anything, an evil man takes the book and leaves you in a cloud of poison. Good luck finding it now. You need a hammer to get it out. Get it off the wall. Okay, what should I do? <laughs> okay, it just went all over the place. So what happened again? Something, uh, someone came and took, took this from us. Now we need a hammer to get it off the wall, which we don't have, obviously. All right, so what about look queen? Is the queen really here? Okay, what does the queen, what does queen mean? Oh my gosh, doesn't understand that. Well, it had a nice premise at least. Let's go uh, south. Is that all we can do? I liked the interface at first, but now I'm not so much enjoying the text parser. So now let's try go east. So it doesn't understand E for east or S for south. You have to type the whole thing out. Where am I? Chance says here. What's here? Shovel. Get shovel. Does it understand this? Most of the time, whenever a text adventure game tells you what you can get, it's longer description, and then you say a sort of description, and it works for you. Doesn't look like that here. And it, what, what kind of fantasy is this? We're in London. It doesn't really seem like a fantasy adventure game. Okay, so let's keep going east. Where are we now? What in the world? Sing for May at home. What's here? Mr. Marple? What in the world is this? This is someone that was in their basement programming a text adventure game, I think. I enjoy the premise. I like how they just state, here you are. Here's what's here. Here's the exits. Here's what you got. And then what you need to do. But the text parser needs some work. I don't think I could enjoy that too much longer. I'd say of all the games we played at this point, I mean, think about it. Infocom is out. We have the feelies out with adventure games, and interactive fiction is in full force by this point. <laughs> Turn it off and play Donkey Kong. That's what you always say, Chiptune, and I'm with you. That's what I would do, too. So for Fantasyland, this one is a poor uh, game. I'd say two stars. It's a bad title. It's not broken, but 
it's uh, not the best adventure, adventure game you could play. And with that, let's press forward and see our next game. We're next going to the arcade, and this is Fast Freddy. Very excited for this one. Another arcade release. Most of the time, because of the home computer boom, we've been playing computer game after computer game. And now we finally get to go to the arcades to see the newest arcade game by Atari. Let's take a look at the artwork for Fast Freddy. Here's the advertisement flyer. Really, really slick because it's Atari. Looks really nice. Freddy's over the top. Hang gliding. We got the en enemies coming, at, coming, out, coming after us, but it just pops. Really enjoy Atari's advertisement. And there's the example of the arcade cabinet. Pretty much looks exactly, yeah, it's the exact same one on the advertisement flyer. And then we got the board here and we have the control panel. Kind of a very bad version of the control panel, but all the controls that we have is that we, we have an eight-way joystick and we have the button for land. There's the arcade marquee for Fast Freddy. This is one I have never played in the actual arcades. It is slightly part of the golden age of arcade games because it is still Atari before the crash. Let's take a look at the manual for Fast Freddy. And since it's Atari, it's gonna have a really nice manual, right? Yes, operating service manual, full color front of it, and then all of the parts for your arcade cabinet, nice. Illustrated parts list. All the operators right now are salivating. So cool, by Atari. And just bear in mind, we've been playing these games since 1971. And when uh, Pong came out in 72 and Atari did that, we've seen all the manuals since then. And it's just so cool to see now it's 1982, how far we've gone and how far Atari's gone too. Now, they usually give us what's cool or what's new with this arcade cabinet. We're going to breeze by all the installation, obviously. Don't worry about getting electrocuted. We're not going to be servicing the arcade system. There's the setup procedure, how to use the manual. We want to know about the game itself. What does it tell us? Here we go. The new features. Joystick control has an eight position control made of steel molded plastic. A few parts make the servicing easier. Leaf switches snap in and out for easy replacement. Okay, great. What's so different about, it says rubber bellows designed for quick return to center. Okay, I guess that one's a little bit unique, but we played eight-way joysticks, plenty of them. The cabinet has several new features. Cabinet grills both a speaker and a display shield retainer. Nice. The key loops has, okay, that's for the coin operated door. I mean, you got to be able to get it, get those coins easier, right? And then they said check the back serial number. Okay, so really not a lot of new features. Sorry, Atari. Uh, game inspection, make sure you got everything. Installation, don't need that. Switch locations. What is Fast Freddy? Self-test procedure. Nope, don't need to do that. There it is, gameplay. I love reading these because I want to hear from their perspective in 1982 how they describe the game. Fast Freddy game is a one or two player, or well, alternating, with color raster scan video display. The game depicts a hang glider, Fast Freddy, Gliding in the sky, Fast Freddy glides over the land and must avoid obstacles on the land and in the sky. As he glides along, he can pick up letters to spell the word bonus for bonus points. He has to pick up the letters in the correct order, B, first, O, second, etc. To end each round, he has to land on a landing platform. Oh no, landing. We'll see how well that works. Fast Freddy has six possible modes of operation. Demonstration, attract, ready to play, play, high score, and self-test. Now, we kind of take these for granted because arcade cabinets are going to get more and more complicated with how many modes are available. This one is six modes, but you can see it's not like uh, rounds in, a, in the, the game. It's talking about the, the modes that the arcade system goes from one to the other. Like it has a demonstration, attract mode, ready to play, high score, self-test, and uh, we don't really care about the demonstration, attract mode, uh, and then it explains what's happening in the track, and then the ready-to-play mode, and then the actual play mode. The player causes Fast Freddy to glide in the sky and avoid obstacles that land in the sky. Player uses kick to destroy objects. Kick? Okay. Destroy the objects that are below him. Fast Freddy begins each life with 12 seconds of kick. 12 seconds? Oh, I guess since you're a hang glider, you can kick your legs around. Fast Freddy can pick up bonus words, 100 points each, to spell the word bonus. Round one begins with Fast Freddy on a mountain in an alpine setting. He runs off the mountain and glides to the sky. And there's our points and game scoring all broken down for us. Gotta have the points. The points is why you play the video games. Gliding's worth 10 points for five and a quarter inch. All right. Picking up a letter on a flag is worth 100 points. Landing platforms are that many. Yeah, landing is going to be. I want to see how well those work. After a period of times, airplanes will start to appear, just and they'll tr destroy Fast Freddy if they hit him. So it is a horizontally scrolling game that you don't really need to shoot anybody. It's just dodging everyone, because uh, the kick momentum is just to pick up the flags. There's nine rounds of gameplay in this one, though. First, fourth, seventh round show an airplane setting in the summer, autumn, and winter. Second and fifth depict ocean setting with colored backgrounds. Very nice. And then Egypt. We go to Egypt too. So cool. 
Another reason why we want to keep playing. Let's see the next level or the next uh, uh, round. Is that what they call them here? Yeah, round. Okay, that round at least makes sense. And we're not going to do any troubleshooting on Fast Freddy today. Let's go to the arcades and play Fast Freddy, developed by Kaneko. This is published by Atari at the beginning of May 1982. Yeah, there we go. Starting off with the artwork all the way around that you would see in the arcades. Now, this release is one of two that we're going to be checking out today. This is the one that came out in North America that Atari picked up. And we're going to play the original. Uh, I don't know if for sure if it's the original, but it was, in, it was in other regions as well. All right, we're going through the attract mode. I'm going to zoom this in so we can get a closer look at the gameplay. There we go. Oh, yeah, attract mode's going. There's Fast Freddy. Look at him. Oh, my gosh. He probably had too much to drink on his hand glider. Let's put a coin in. And go! <laughs> nice, we get a Diddy to play every time. Alright, okay, so I missed the B bonus flag. I can't pick up O or any of the others. N won't work either. So the A-Way joystick is just to move Freddy around. All you do is fly around. <laughs> Can you really de de destroy the planes? I want to try. Yes, I must have metal legs. <laughs> It is. It doesn't destroy them, but it does kick them down. Fast Freddy, the bionic leg man. Digging the music. Oh, kick didn't work there. There we go. Okay, well, at least I got O, but it doesn't count unless you get all the letters in a row. I won't waste too much of the kick. There's B. Okay, got it. And you see it's collected down at the bottom. Missed O. It feels a little bizarre playing a horizontally scrolling game that you don't shoot anything. I'm, I'm expecting and used to shooting something, but all I'm doing is dodging. It feels a little different. <laughs> Very charming once he dies. And it feels like we're just going for a, a, a really fun game with the music playing in the background. Oh yes, let's go, go, go. Oh, what? I thought I picked up the, oh, the U, I mean. Oh, he picked the wrong letter, though, and it resets the whole thing. Oh, no, that's not good. Well, I'll pick these extra ones up for bonus points. You don't need to kick to pick them up. All right, so looking for the O, not the U. There's B again. Nope, I didn't want the U. Oh, yeah, so a little tricky to, to, to get used to it because your only way to attack... <laughs> Wow, using the eight-way joystick for this? Okay, putting in our initials. And there it is. Atari Incorporated, we are at the top. I have no idea how we're at the top. We first booted the game in, that's why. No problem. All right, let's put another coin in, and let's go. After we play, or after we checked out the electronic gaming issue and they were talking about the games they hope they never see, and most of them were violent video games. This kind of shows you where they were in May 1982. I mean, this is just adorable. It's not even doing any shooting. It's just, you're, you're just hang gliding. I wasn't paying attention to the letters. Can I even go after the helicopter is what I want to know. Big, t big thing to look at is the number of colors on screen at one time. <laughs> it is fun to see him die, though. And the control is so smooth. After all the computer games we played with some jank controls, going to the arcades and holding the arcade stick feels very nice. Get out of here. All you gotta do is dodge, so it's it, it feels a little different that all I'm using the, the, the joystick is moving around. I guess similar to Pac-Man. You don't really have any extra buttons or firepower in Pac-Man. All you do is just move and dodge. <laughs> That's true. There is no parachute on the plane, so maybe we are performing violence on the on the other pilots out there. Alright, we'll just skip by this one. AAA or ABC. He's doing pretty good. Alright, let's put in some extra coins and see if we get something more than that. Got four credits in now. If we did wanted to do two players, this would be alternating play. And I always want to see when we play games if they're simultaneous. Because uh, simultaneous play, I'd still say, is the biggest draw to this. Oh, I just missed the S. I want to get that bonus. No, I don't want the N. Oh, I messed it up already. 
I guess I need to stop being so liberal with the kicks. Just go for it. Use them all. Can I get this helicopter up here? It looks like they're following a pattern. Oh. Land. Oh, yeah. Landing was easy. No problem. I guess it depends on what platform you go for. And then we get, now we're on the next, next level. So level isn't determined by how many planes you take down. Oh, I missed the B again. But, um... It's determined by how just how long the level is. So it's a, a full scroll from one side to the other. And notice the way we're scrolling. They wanted to switch it up going from right to left instead of left to right. I'll take the B, the O, and now we got enemies that are coming in a little bit faster. Wait, wait. Why are the planes on, <laughs> on an aircraft carrier? Now we're getting serious. I thought we were just having fun hang gliding here. I mean, look, look at his face. We're having a blast. No need to bring in the military. Nope, get away from me, birds. I just need an S. They're giving me double M's. There it is, S. What? I went down, it felt... That felt like it was jerking me around a little bit that time. <laughs> and CD now is the top score. There we go. All right, so as you saw in the manual, there's multiple levels to play, um, and it takes a little bit of getting used to because you're you, if you're used to shooting something like all the other games we played, Fast Freddy feels um, a little uh, different. Uh, more charming, I guess, even though, you know, I guess we're killing airplanes out there. But I'd still give Fast Freddy, for all the games we've seen to this point, uh, three and a half stars. It's it's an above average arcade game. It's doing pretty good, but it's uh, it's not a whole lot that has going for it to make you want, want to play more games. <laughs> oh, the dirty birds, we got to take them out. Well, three is, mm, yeah, I can see you going with three as well. We'll go three and a half stars. It's, it's still um, pretty, pretty good, a slightly above average for 1982. And with that, the very next release we're playing is the same game, just with a different title, Flyboy, which was the one that was developed by Kaneko. So just sm small nuances here. We have no manual for this one. As far as artwork, it's just the PCB control panel and then yeah, not, not even the advertiser flyer because I guess Atari must have picked it up before then. And we also have a bootleg version as well. So let's go to the arcades and play Flyboy. By Kaneko, the beginning of May 1982. Something we've I've always loved, yeah. Going to the arcades. Remember Tilt? Remember the Tilt arcade? Here we go. Let's put a coin in and see. And notice the difference. There isn't an opening or a track mode is the same. So Flyboy looks pretty similar already. I still have <laughs> the crazy kick. Oh, the control though. Flyboy feels different than Fast Freddy. This actually feels more like I'm flying on a hang glider. It's a pseudo simulation. So compared to... Whoa, yeah, I can't move down quickly to go get the letters. This one, actually, I'm pulling back and forward, and it takes a little bit of sl slowdown, as if I was hang gliding. But why would they do that? Well, I guess the original, they're not sure. And this is why Atari picked it up. So yeah, Flyboy is a different feeling game, gameplay-wise. Graphically, it looks a little different, not too much. How much do I have? I, I think I have Infinite Kick. And they even show you uh, the map down below in the bottom right. How much you have left. We're slowly making our way to the other side of the screen. This is the very first video game we've ever played that scrolls as a, a flying game from right to left, rather than left to right. Oh, go, go, go! Maybe that's the other reason it takes a little bit getting used to, of going the other direction. Yeah, so picking up the letters is different. It feels really weird with the control. You have to think of yourself, I'm, I'm actually flying a hang glider, not a, a plane that has easy movement. So when Atari grabbed it, they did change up the gameplay. You have to think ahead. Do I have infinite kick? I don't see a meter. They, they have a meter for kick in the other one. And it looks like now 
I can just... It just w works, and then it stops for a sec. I don't see anything telling me it's gonna run out. Where in the world is the O for bonus? This is taking... Oh, you gotta land now? Okay, so, yeah, landing is gonna be harder, too, because... Yeah, it takes a little bit longer to go down. Tornado Terry! That's a good shout-out. <laughs> All right, let's go fly, boy. We're now at the ocean, so they already switched up to the next level. So, small nuances, uh, depending on how Atari picked it up, but uh, still all right for the time. I would give this one, because the play control isn't as, as top-notch, uh, I'm going to give this one an average score. So, we'll go three stars for fly, boy. It is different. So, while I thought this was just a reskin or just a different title, no, it's just actually two d different games that feel different. They do look pretty much the same, though. All right, and with that, let's see what our next game is. Where are we going now? It's time to put in the palm of our hand Frisky Tom, that arcade game that everyone loved. Now you can put it in, in a handheld. Let's check out Frisky Tom, starting with the box. So, this one it was released in lots of regions, first in Japan by Bandai. And you can see this is Bandai Electronics Arcade. They have the same artwork that they use in the arcade. Tom the Plumber has to outwit the pesky mice to keep the water flowing. Real arcade action, bright fluorescent readout. Oh yeah. This one is really similar to the one we played called Packery Monster. It looks like the same case, or very similar to the case that we checked out. All the excitement and challenge of the arcade game. Bright three-color screen, game sounds out of the excitement. And then... They break down everything that you're that you're seeing on the screen. So it looks like we have a joystick on the right, and the joystick looks like just a knob you move around with one action button. That's it. Power on, power off. Let's see what other art we have for Frisky Tom, the handheld by Bandai. Not to be confused with another handheld by Bandai that's LCD. Bandai had lots of them. Yeah, so this is the box that you would have seen in Japan by Nichibutsu. 7,600 yen for this one. And there's the back of the box in Japan. LSI portable game, and what you have in the palm of your hand with an example of the screenshot. Now, you got to use your imagination because uh, handhelds really aren't going to translate well if I'm just playing the handheld and showing you on camera. So here it is, zoomed in all the way. Let's play Frisky Tom by Bandai. In the beginning of May 1982, this is it. The game starts when you power it on in an attract mode like an arcade game. And it's kind of a slimmed down version of the arcade, obviously, but look how well done this is. Using vacuum fluorescent display, it uh, would pop a little bit more if you had it in the palm of your hand, but we're doing the best we can just to show you what it's like. And the way, the way it works is you move yourself around connecting the pipes. Once all the pipes are connected, then it fills up the shower, which is right over here above my shoulder, I think. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with Frisky Tom. Nice, get a little ditty to start off. Now you can move left and right. All you got to do is work your way around the top and pick up the pipe. So I'm obviously playing as the blue guy. The mice are coming after me. And do I have... Where's my action? Yeah, I can use the pipes to smack the mouse like that. And then you can only climb up and down up or over here on the left side or the right side. But you're just trying to connect them. So a piece falls off down at the bottom. Let's go up to the top and connect it. Now the water's going to flow through there. It's going, go, 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 all the way, all the way, yes. Oh, no, a rat's... Okay, a rat hadn't stopped yet. But we're filling up the tub now. Nice. Who knew plumbing would be so much fun? I gotta tell you, though, this handheld is, plays really good. For a recreation of something in the arcades, they did a great job simplifying it and making it really easy. Yep, it's working. There you go. You can see a part fell at the top. But as soon as one of the mice gets you on the uh, a space that you're on, then... You die, just like we did. Yes, that's true. Uh, I think you're going to say that every time, because it definitely beats the Tiger games, for sure. All right, listen, we go again. Yeah, over on the far left side is the number of lives we have. Okay, so let's keep going up. Looks like we got one of them that already knocked one down. Got to go get it quickly, and I can use the pipe. That's interesting. You can use the pipe to knock the mouse. Oh, you got me first. Let me see. Try it again. There we go. And work your way over here. Got to get this other one together. Yeah, this is great. This it, it's, it's a lot simpler than the arcade. You just have to watch now for that. There, a pipe just dropped. Grab it. Bash the mice, mouse in the head. Love it. 
You can also climb up and down the ladders on the, on the ends here. Oh yeah, the for, for a handheld, this is this is really really good. It gives you an objective rather than just trying to um, make something happen faster and faster like a Nintendo game and a watch. I'd even say this is up there with as good at, or, or, or around like something that's as fun to play as the arcade, which is really rare for a handheld. I'm gonna go one more time. Now that I'm getting the hang of how it works. But they give you the action button to knock the mice out and you can move around. Let me, let's catch this pipe, climb up there and pop that one in. And let's see the next one that falls down. So right now we're just watching where the mice are, make sure, making sure we're not in the way to lose a life and then see what pipe they knock off next. They're not doing anything right now, but it's, it's, it's interesting that it's random. There's one that's coming up Two looking for what they do. Let's see. He just dropped one. We got it. We got a victory. Yes. And then we go to the next level. There we go. Okay. So the next level just makes it harder than it was before. Only in Japan is the end screen or the victory seeing a woman in the bath. Which is that what all plumbers want to do at the end of the day? <laughs> or maybe in Japan. Oh, see, I, the only thing I can't tell is when the mice are attacking or not. When, when they're in the state, you can smack them, and when you're about to lose a life, I cannot tell. All right, we got one popped off here. Oh, and the mice are also moving ladders too. Yeah, this simplicity works really well for the handheld. Way to go, Bandai. That's awesome. <laughs> yes, we, we're, we are going to experience all that crap as well when it comes up at some point. And it does have the bathing woman. Did you see it? It was it was like right above my shoulder there. But, you know, it's just it, it's the like one example of it on, on it's it's not not like the arcade had anything, anything to really look at. But uh, for handhelds, though, this is awesome. Uh, I got to give this as one of the best handhelds we've seen that you could put, put in the palm of your hand and play because it's playing just like an arcade game. One of the best, well, I'm going to say four and a half stars for Frisky Tom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Chiptune's going four and a half too. Nice. Because think of all the handhelds we've seen. Every single handheld, this one is really close to playing like an arcade game. On a vacuum fluorescent display, it must have been awesome. All right, so after Frisky Tom, let's see where we're going now. Here are the controls. We're back on the Commodore VIC-20, and this is Galaxians? Galaxians, I guess? Let's take a look at Galaxians. Here are the controls of an Atari video computer system. Here are the controls of the Commodore VIC-20 home computer. Now, which one do you think really deserves to be called a computer? If you say the VIC-20, well, here's a little additional piece of information. The VIC-20 also plays games like you've never seen before. Mere child's play for a true computer. The Commodore VIC-20, a real computer for the price of a toy. That's really not fair because they call it the video computer system back in 1977. And they did have plans to make it a computer. That that kind of was one of the reasons the VCS sold better is because people thought they were getting something that was a computer rather than just something to play games. But oh man, oh man, we only played games on the VCS, that's for sure. All right, so this is Galaxians. Let's take a look at the artwork for Galaxions by Interceptor Software. Front of the box, pretty standard space shooter, I guess we're going to be checking out. There's the cassette tape we're going to be popping in. An example of the screenshot. No manual for this one, so it's time to play Galaxians by Anthony Barton. Interceptor Micros in the beginning of May 1982. Okay, Interceptor Software. Press a key. We're ready. Got my joystick, Big 20 joystick plugged in. We're in. Oh my gosh. That is terrible. It is repeating the same thing over and over again. Wow, my ears cannot believe how bad this is. <laughs> now, it's a tile-based game, but it's done so badly. Gosh, it feels like they just threw it together as fast as they could. It's half, it feels like it's half working. Wow, that's a total game over. My goodness. 
Okay, yeah, no, I can't take anymore. No, it Galax Galaxians. Wow, that's so bad. Now, bear in mind, you think to yourself, wait, maybe try doing it with a d different RAM in your VIC-20. Or maybe try a different model of the VIC-20. No, no. we've I've tried it all. Every single one ends this way, and every time I've seen gameplay footage, all the gameplay footage looks this way, too. So guess what? Galaxians, uh, you're going to get down here in the broken range, because that's assailing the ears. Can't stand to look at it. It has some weird glitches or problems to it. We're going half star with Galaxians. Wow. <laughs> Negative zero? Yeah, if we could. I was told that if we go zero, it just means that we're not rating it at all. So I'm going to go just half star so that everyone knows just how bad the game is. All right, so the, there it is. The good, the bad, and the ugly that we play here on the on the channel. Let's see what our next game is. Still on the Commodore VIC-20. Please give us something better on the Commodore VIC-20. This is Great Adventure. Another one that we don't have a box for, just a few screenshots. Let's pop in and play Great Adventure by Com Data Computer House in the beginning of May 1982. This is the latest, greatest game to play. Use the F keys to move. I'll give you an F key. This one uses the function keys to play, believe that or not. <laughs> yes, we will toss that one in the trash. Oh my gosh. All right, so this one is a role-playing game, and I think this is the only decision you get to make in the game. Do you want strength or do you want persuasion? Why would you want persuasion? I don't know. We're going strength. So pushing one. Great adventure. Here we are. We may move. We are the plus right there. That's us. Now, you have to use the function keys to move, which means I'm pushing F3 to move left, F6 to move down, F4. or Like, it's all the function keys to move your character around. And uh, whenever I hit a dead end, I'm hitting at symbols. They said that those are viper's nests. Okay, thank you. And we're just wandering around right now. Random events are going to happen as we walk around. Let's see what happens if we go into the mountains. Anything? I took a step. No, oh, okay. It doesn't let us go in the mountains. Oh, we found a cave? Ooh, let's go in the cave. We go inside. Nothing's inside. Oh, okay. We're trying to explore here. It doesn't work out. Wow, the controls are so strange, though. Function keys only? We've seen a couple games that do that, but this is four different directions, so you have to remember which function key goes in what direction. And if you're looking over on the left, like, why do we see a lot of clovers on the Commodore VIC-20? Well, it's part of the character set of the Commodore, and so this is really easy to program and put in clover, spade, you know, all the symbols on cards. Uh, can I go on the clover? Okay, can't pick the clover. All right. Going to try here. So this is doing what we've seen with other role-playing games where you move around. Oh, is it just wrap around? This is it, a fixed, it's a fixed screen role-playing game. <laughs> this is all it is. And then down at the bottom right, I guess that's the lake that we're going to. Okay, we can move through some of the, no, we can't move the, through the mountains. Let's see if there's another cave that has something inside. Is there anything here on this great adventure we're on? So controls are bizarre, but I really shouldn't be surprised. We've seen even worse controls. We go inside the cave, and it's a dragon's cave. Do we want to fight the dra dragon or bargain with the dragon? Maybe if we pick persuasion, we can persuade the dragon to not kill us, but we're definitely fighting since we pick strength. You triumph. You may move. And that's it. That, that, that was all the battle was. Not as complicated as what we've seen in Ultima or Wizardry, and not nearly as uh, frantic as what we've seen in, like, the Black Crystal, the, the other ones from the UK. Found a cave. What's here? We go inside. It's another dragon's cave. This time, let's try to bargain with the dragon. Please don't burn us, dragon. He wants gold. <laughs> and he takes two pieces of gold. What kind of dragon is this? He's taking gold from us? Okay. And we make our way around. Okay, so there you go. That is Great Adventure. It would be pretty fun for the time. I'm going to say, of all the games we've seen up to this point, it, it still would be enjoyable to wander around, have random events happen, and uh, the controls are a little bit off or, or strange, and so we've seen other games that, that would be doing this better. So, <laughs> if only they let us do that, it'd be pretty cool. I'm still going to say, of all the, of the games we've seen up to this point, it's still around average. Uh, so I'm going to say two and a half stars, just subpar. Not bad, though. It's not a bad game. So there's Great Adventure. Let's see where we're going now. It's time to go to England. And this is the ZX Spectrum. We're going to play some Great Britain Limited. Yes, the moment you've all been waiting for. British computing was a miraculous exception. They're them hacking up ZX Spectrum. wasn't sacking everyone. 
If it's got a keyboard, a manual, and computer written on it, it'll sell. Chiclet keyboards That's don't That's the word count. around the exploding market for personal or home computers that simply plug into a television set. We're the world's largest producer of computers. We there he is, Clive Sinclair. The of Japan put together. Technological that innovations is claiming they make more than Japan. entrepreneurialism. The perfect now. mix for a leader who was a science graduate as well as a free market evangelist. And there's Margaret, Margaret Thatcher showing off the ZX Spectrum. Home computer. <laughs> In recession, speak British very, computing very slow to the miraculous exception. This is a home computer. So this is Great Britain Limited. Yes, it is a prime minister simulation. We've already seen a few other government simulators on the show. Some are pretty good. This is our first one we've seen from the UK. And this one is going to be a doozy. Let's take a look at the artwork for Great Britain Limited by Simon W. Hessel. Way to go, Simon. We have two different boxes. Uh, another one, one by Microgen and another one that Simon did himself. Or maybe this is the one Simon did himself. Most of these are boxes as in the sleeve in the cassette case. So it's more to show it's the front case, not really a box front. <laughs> he did look like maybe she was visiting a Bond villain. That'd be awesome. And then we also have the instructions. We are the prime minister and chancellor of Great Britain. Your aim is to stay in office as long as possible. So this is the beginning of the game. You're asked to enter your name and ask a political party you want to represent. The screen will then set up details of the state of the country, including the following, what the inflation rate is, exchange rate, unemployment rate, popularity rating. So it is a government simulator, straight up government simulator. We played in a few others where you play as president in North America. But here we go in the UK, more government simulators. They give you the country profile with population, number of companies currently in business, tax income, expenditure, balance, and so forth. You have a shopping basket of the current price of various products displayed together with adjusted retail price index. Nice with taking into account into inflation. So you have to make those kind of decisions. Budget the number of days you have with taxes, budget the days with benefits, reform opportunity, and then they give you some tips and tricks down at the bottom. And then you have election night where you want to get reelected every single time. They don't point out anything involving corruption. And when we read the issue of electronic games, they said, we hope this game never gets made where you are actually doing corruption in that in those games. <laughs> That'd be a cool idea. Boris Johnson versus the Vi uh, Iron Lady. Yes. And then there's our cassette we're going to be popping in. Cassette tape to play some video games. That's right. For other versions, we have the Hessel one and then the Micro Gen re-release. We're going to play the first one. It is the beginning of May 1982, and this is Great Britain Limited by Simon W. Hessel. Enter your name. All right, so let's go with Chrono. What party do you represent? We can be conservative, labor, liberal, or social democrat. <laughs> Since it's all colorful, and because of the ZX Spectrum, let's go Social Democrat. So this is the term for Great Britain, year one, inflation, percentage exchange rate, unemployment, population, reforms, account balance. We have, yikes, negative 10 million pounds. Oh, that's not good. And then there's our country profile, income from taxes. And then so this giving us all the stats, everything we need to. Then we push enter to continue. This is not the first. This is like um, a preview of games that are going to be coming up with simulators. Because they, they, you do with what you can. And these are the kind of games you can play. So enter to continue. There's our shopping basket. We got petrol, scotch. Going, wow, 7.77 pounds each for scotch. Mills is only 22. Nice. I think that's pence. And then we have the budget day taxes category rate. So it's all stats and then saying what prefix, prefix of the tax do you want to change? And we can change, we'll change uh, income income tax. So let's go. Key in the future rate and then hit enter. Let's change it to, let's see what 50 does. And anything else we can change? We can change the alcohol tax. Let's really piss people off and change that one. Let's make the alcohol tax uh, 25 instead of four. Oh yeah. A lot more for alcohol whenever I'm in charge. <laughs> Who needs petrol? Everyone. We don't need those. Okay, so we do no more changes. We go G, and now it's going to <laughs> pick budgets, child allowance, old age pension, unemployment benefits. And then we can key in and change those rates. So if we do child allowance, let's make children cost way too much. And let's make them uh, 90. Can we make it 95? Yes, 95 pounds. Sweet. All right, no more changes there. <laughs> this is the fun you would have had because uh, just think of this is the very beginning of video games or home uh, micros so you, you you would have fun like this playing 
the game is if I was in charge, I'd do all this and just to see what would happen. Okay, so we got reform opportunities now, improving health services, building new homes, jobs for school levers, build new schools, improve road system. Let's oh, we can do all these if we want to. Let's uh, let's improve the road system, and then next time we'll just take away all the petrol. All right, so let's do how much do we want to allocate? We can do. Uh, oh, we have. It says we have no million. So if I do five hundred, will it even work? Processing. It will work. Okay, yeah, we'll do. We're done with that. We'll improve the road system and then we'll take away all the petrol. Why not? Breaking news: We are terrible at leading. I think that's what's going to say. Party wets have rebelled against fifty percent tax income rate. Okay, they, they didn't like that. It must be reduced to forty-four percent. And now, what do we do? Can we say yes or no? So this is a government simulator. It is not a dick. To dictator simulator, we're not gonna—we're not in charge of a country. We're not forcing things on them. That would be fun to be the dictator of a country. I think we've already played one like that. Severe rioting in many large cities occurred during the year. Yes, all according to our plan. <laughs> and then it breaks down the stats. Now we are in year two during our term of office, so it goes pretty quick. And then at the end, you get reelected. But that's it. A great idea for making it so simple. You know, it's not trying to do something super fancy. That's Great Britain Limited for the ZX Spectrum. So it's a simple premise. Great idea for a government simulator. It doesn't get too complicated. I still say for the time, it's it's enjoyable and works, works really well. And uh, you would have had a lot of fun with it. So I'm going to go three and a half stars for Great Britain Limited. Great job, ZX Spectrum. Now, let's see what our next game is. We're back on the Commodore VIC-20. Man, it's a lot of Commodore VIC-20 tonight. And this is Grid Runner. Let's take a look at Grid Runner, starting with the box. We got two different flavors. This one's for the cartridge on their Commodore VIC-20. Yeah, great artwork. It actually looks like the game, which is pretty nice. I mean, not like the, uh, not actually what the screenshot of the game looks like, but that is what the game is, like what you're doing in the game. Enemy droids are amassing on Earth's orbiting solar power station, the Grid. To combat them, the humans have developed lightning-fast battleship known as the Grid Runner. As a pilot, you must avoid droid weapons and annihilate them before they attack Earth. And then we also have the alt uh, alternate box, which is this one. This is the very first box that it came out by Llamasoft. Yeah, and the Dragon. Yeah, well, dr Grid Runner's on so many systems. We're going to see them on a lot of this on a lot of computers. We're going to see it first here on the Commodore VIC-20. And there's the ad... Is Grid Runner unbeatable? No one, not even the author, has ever achieved the last Grid Runner. Only you can do it. And there's our cartridge or our cassette we're going to pop in for Grid Runner with the llama. That means it's by Jeff Minter. You know he's got llamas everywhere. And I just want to point out right now, just look at this box and think that you're in a computer store. And this is what you would see and read first before buying the game. All right, we also have the manual, which is just one sleeve. Yeah, I knew it was Jeff Mentor. When Lammers are involved, Jeff Mentor's somewhere around here. In the year 2190, the human race has set up a huge solar power collecting power station. Wait, what? In Earth orbit to beam down to Earth. Because of its lattice-like shape, this power station is simply known as the grid, which has got to be re related to Tron, right? Jeff, did you write this? Shortly after beginning operation, the grid was found to be delivering less power than predicted. Investigative teams were sent into orbit. They discovered the grid has been invaded by alien droids who were using its power to reproduce themselves, massing for an invasion of Earth, just like space invaders. To combat the droids, a special combat ship was developed, small and incredibly maneuverable. The ship drew its power from the grid and, in such vast amounts of energy readily available, was able to carry an awesomely powerful plasma cannon. It's known as the Grid Runner. We have three main weapons, grid search squads, pods, and XY zappers. These are linked droid segments which traverse the grid horizontally, descending whenever you encounter an obstruction. Each squad has a rotating leader droid. If the leader is hit, the droid segment behind him takes over. If the squad is hit in the body, it splits to two independent squads. And if you can't figure out now what kind of game this is or what it's copying, you'll see, you'll see when we boot it up. Squads come in any size from solitary leader droids, linked squads of mini droids. Is this only, yeah, it's just one page of instructions. Whenever a squad a droid is hit, the body turns into a pod. Square droids are, uh, droids are vulnerable to their own XY zapper, can be hit or split by them. 
So we got pods that are small yellow devices lodged at nodes of the grid, periodically growing in size and, and changing shape. When they reach the end of their life cycle, they hurl a single bolt of unstoppable lethal energy down the grid. Hitting a pod regresses at one stage of its life cycle. Repeating hits will eventually destroy them. Then we have the XY Zappers. These are two ships that run along the boundaries of the grid. Periodically, they stop, and the Y Zapper emits a plasma beam. The X Zapper fires a plasma beam along the grid. And when the two meet, a pod forms. It's not wise to get caught in the plasma beam. Don't cross the beams. And your chances of losing a ship happen. So starting grid runner, turn the power off. Put that cartridge in. Yeah, this is the cartridge version. I think we only have the disc uh, or the cassette version. So let's see. Yeah, we only have the, the cassette version. So we're going to pop in and play Grid Runner on your Commodore VIC-20. Get ready for Jeff Minter's latest game, the beginning of May 1982. Grid Runner, yes. I'm seeing if there's an attract mode or some kind of arcade style, but uh, not getting anything there. We have our joystick plugged in, so push the button. We're in, yes. So here we go. I can move around. We have our XY gunners that I can see on the sides. They're making the plasma beams as they cross the streams. You want to avoid them. But you can see we have the main enemy. Yes, the grid was zapped. We still got six lives. The main enemy that comes down is the one that is obviously an homage to Centipede. So this is like a space age Centipede that we're playing. But done really well. Lots to think of. We have different enemies. The X and Y zappers on each side that we need to get out of their way. Whenever they join together, they make a pod that if it gets large enough, cause a nuclear blast across the whole grid and we die. So we have to monitor those and keep those down while at the same time shooting the the, the other enemy that's coming out like that. That was the nuclear blast because it got too big. Man, but it's fast paced. And can I move? Okay, I can't move everywhere. It's similar to Centipede, where you can move up just a little bit, like a third of the screen, and then can't move past that. And so you kind of get used to what is going to attack you and when. You have to... Tip. Yes, we got it. Grid was zapped. Yeah, a really popular game for the time. And you can see why. It takes Centipede and makes it like a sci-fi space shooter. It's done really well. Plays really good. And very nice touch, making it a tile-based game on a grid. Let's see if we can get out of the way of those guys. But there's so much going on to think about where all the enemies are going to explode. Like, we have lots of nodes while we're trying to it's still take out the... I forget the name of the enemy that's coming down like the centipede. Nope, oh, nope. Get me, get me, come on. Got it. Grid zapped. And you move level by level gets progressively faster and faster, more intense. This is the first time we've seen Grid Runner, and it's going to be on a lot of home computers. So uh, we'll, we'll pop and play a little bit on the different ports. One of the main reasons I like to do that is at this point when a game comes out, the, the first game they make for it, every port is not a direct copy. In fact, some games can be completely different games and, and have the same name. So uh, I, I'd like to at least uh, showcase a little bit of the ports that come out. Wow, yeah, it's so, it, it is so much fun. There's, there's a lot to think of and it's, it, it, think of the games that we played on console Atari and television and so forth. And then this comes out for the, the little Commodore VIC-20. This is one of the best games you could play on the Commodore VIC-20 at the time. Like uh, It reminds me of uh, the, the, the quality of Lunar Leaper that we've seen. That was one of the best games on the Commodore VIC-20 as well. we got three lives left. They're really generous with the lives, which is kind of nice. Can I take out the X and Y zappers? I don't think I can. They just stay on the boundary making our lives miserable. Wow. Yep. And so whenever the node explodes in plasma, it just flies down on the screen and comes at you. So you just have to be aware that some of these are going to be blowing up and coming down on the end of the screen. But if you take care of the main enemy in blue, then you should be all right. Wow. <laughs> all right. So if we... Look at all the games we've played for the home computer up to this point. 
Would you consider this one of the games that is the best games you could play for a home computer? Or is it just an exceptional or very good game for the time? Min Zero. There we go. That's great. I really enjoy the home computer games that you can plug a joystick in and play. And we do we see this on the Atari home computer when you have the VCS joystick plugged in. And now because the VIC-20 is selling itself as it's just as good as a console, you know, a three, uh, under $300 price for playing lots of really good games better than uh, the Atari VCS. And I think they say, in, yeah, they say in television too. And so this does it. You, you put the game in, you, you start the game, you plug your joystick in and you go. You don't even need to use the keyboard. It's great. Yeah, I'm going to go for four stars actually for Grid Runner. And if anyone in chat wants to throw out their rating of something higher, I'm going to say four uh, I could possibly go higher, but this is the range that we say is one of the best games you could play on a home computer. If you Would you consider this one of the best games you could play on a home computer? And this is like all the home computers that are out there. Or is it just a really good game? Four stars. Yeah, I'm going to go four. Grid Runner is great. All right, so after Grid Runner, let's see what our next game is. Oh, man. From one to another. <laughs> let's go on the ZX81 and check out Gulp Man. The poorly titled Gulp Man. <laughs> the superhero no one ever wanted. Let's take a look at the box for Gulp Man. This is by Micro Mega. Programmed by John Campbell. John, what is what is Gulp Man all about? Well, we'll find out. We got uh, different boxes for Gulp. Well, we, we have the same box. This is the one that came out for the ZX Spectrum and the ZX81. So we're going to be checking out the ZX... 81 first and I believe we have okay just an alternate version let's pop in and play Gulp Man in the beginning of May 1982 by John Campbell Gulp Man so we have different instructions in the beginning welcome to Gulp Man the object is to sear yourself which is the number zero around a maze and pop up the dots mop up the dots to gain points. But where there are four chasers, which are asterisks, one will cost the life each time one catches up with you. You're armed with a bank of lasers. Laser blasts go in four directions and any asterisk in direct line is hit is sent back to its corner. And then, oh nice. So it uses, <laughs> uses the key, use F to move forward. Whoa, scrolling text on the ZX81. Look at this. Nice. Every hundred dots cleaned up, a thousand points makes the asterisk go a little faster up to a point. If you clear the maze of dots, then a bonus refill of dots and extra lasers are given, but no more lives. Game ends when you, when, whenever you lose your lives or when you hold down the X key. We give you a choice of two ways in which to steer. They are the R key and the N key. R and N. So just look down at your ZX81 keyboard and, and think of that. Their simple, simple way is numbers, which is to steer up, down, left, and right. And that's the keyboard, which is right here. Five, six, seven, and eight are your number keys. And then more elegant way is to row, where rows QWERTY form a joystick. And any key on the top or bottom rows fires a laser. Okay, so they're making... The ZX81 did not come with a joystick. So they're making it like use your keyboard as a joystick. That's, that's kind of nice. Use the keys E, F, U, H to steer, and nine fires the laser. So there it is. If you want to use those controls, that's a little confusing there. Train yourself and see how good this system is. <laughs> Between the games, the menu appears, which you use by touching M to select the mazes, overall speed of play, target grade. Okay, so you can, can we do that now? M? No, we can't do it now. Okay, so that's what we do, I guess, later. And then go exit. Or E for exit, sorry. Oh, there it is. Okay, so we can switch out M for maze. You can see at the top. Whoa, we got different mazes. It is a top-down maze game, like Pac-Man. And it's switching out maze D, E, F. Really, really slick interface for the ZX81. Maze I, J. Do we have all letters going on? Okay, we'll keep it there. And then we have tempo. Five, six, seven. I guess that's speed. Yeah, tempo will do four, I guess. And then grade is the skill level. How high does this one go? Oh, gosh. Yeah, it's probably going to go to crazy levels. Okay, and then lives. Nice. And then you can go back to instructions or play. Hitting P to play. So remember those controls. But here we go. We are the circle in the middle. We move around. That's us. No sound because it's the ZX81. No sound exists. Not even a beeper on this one. When I want to fire, I hit my fire button and it goes in all directions. But wow, this is so cool. Gulp Man is a great game because it takes the Pac-Man formula, but you get a gun. 
you can shoot with the laser to fire at the enemies. And you can see I, I got about 16 lasers left in the bottom right corner. That works pretty well. And then we're going to make our way around here. The enemies are actively fighting or, or seeking me out. Every time you kill them, they just reappear back in the corner. But I got 13 lasers. Let's see if we can make ourselves around this side. Go in here. This is a great title for the Zex81. Oh, they got me. So life went down from nine to eight. They're really generous with the lives. In Gulp Man. <laughs> the terribly named Gulp Man. <laughs> Nobody wants a game named Gulp Man. All right, we got seven shots left. Let's see if we can close this out right here. Notice how he's following me around. Wow, yeah. I'm just going to brute force my way through. Go, go, go. Five lasers. Oh, yeah, bonus time. And then bonus level. It adds lasers to us. Nice. We've heard a lot of different sounds tonight. It's kind of bizarre playing a video game with no sounds at all. This is really enjoyable that they give us two different control schemes on the ZX81. Okay, down to two lives. And you can tell this one's programmed better than other ones on the ZX81 without the screen refresh hitting us for every single letter. They're doing something right on the ZX81. And they have uh, lots of mazes for us to switch to and play, which is pretty nice. Well, I'm going to come right out and say it. This is one of the best games you can play on the ZX81. Lots of fun. Taking the for formula of Pac-Man, adding a gun to shoot. And it, it's simple. It's not really have to aim the gun. It's going to fire in all directions. And you have a certain amount that you can use. And you can um, lure the enemies away from you. So there's all the lives we got. But you can see, look at the interface. I, I really like that. For Gulp Man, the title though, yikes. Did it sell more or sell less because it was called Gulp Man? We'll never know. So this is one of the best games for the ZX81. For all the home computers that we've seen up to this point, though, I can't really say it's like an excellent title. It's definitely above average for the, the games we've seen at, at the time. I'm going to go three and a half stars for Gulp Man on the ZX81. It is an above average game for sure. All right, and that's where we got to put our video game playing on pause this evening. Lots more games to come. If you could go back to 1982 and used our five-star rating system, how would you rate all the games? If you can't show up for the live stream, no problem. Let me know in the chats. That's it for today. And like I always say, if at first you don't succeed, just level up a little bit and try again. Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the channel and joining me on my quest to play every single video game in order of release. We'll be streaming live every weekday at 9pm Central, so join us and let us know if we missed any games along the way. This video would not be possible without LaunchBox, RetroArch, and MAME. Tell all your friends there's some crazy guy named Chronologically Gaming trying to play every single video game. We have links down below that'll send you to places like our Discord and Patreon, and one that says all the video games we've ever played. If you go there, it's a list of everything, and you can click right to the game you want to see. Chronologically Gaming is the name to look for. We are Perpetually Retro, and we will catch you next time.